A man has been shot in Huntum's gut. A 50-year-old male is arrested for sex with a girl under the age 13. Alina Phillip collects three gold medals. Marcella Gordon authors an alphabet writing book. And Great Harbor is affected negatively by the diversion of cruise passengers to White Bay. All these and more when 284 returns. Livestream Cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one-month free trial offer. CCT Live. Bring it home. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Welcome viewers, I'm Mia Douglas coming to you live from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. It's finally Friday, February 25th. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Starting off today's news, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has confirmed on February 24th a death of one male who was fatally shot around 10 p.m. in the Huntum's Gut area on Tortola. The victim was pronounced dead on arrival at the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital. 284 Media has confirmed the identity of the victim, however, a name will not be released until appropriate time has been afforded to notify family members. The RVIPF said they are issuing no further information at this time. More to come as the story develops. In other news, police has arrested and charged Delroy Mateus Sr., 50, of Pleasant Valley for sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of 13 years. An arrest blotter from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force said Matthias was granted bail in the sum of $5,000 with one signed surety and will be appearing before the magistrate's court at a later date. According to the Criminal Code of the Virgin Islands, any man who has sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of 13 years commits an offense and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years. The Criminal Code also notes that it is immaterial in the case of a charge of an offense under this section that the intercourse was had with the consent of the girl concerned. Additionally, any man who is convicted of an attempt to commit this offense is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years. More to come as this story develops. Up next, Alina Phillip collects three gold medals and a 31-point lead in swimming championship. This story and more after a quick break. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up. Start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. The wait is over! CCT Fire is here! Experience 
ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing super fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Welcome back, viewers. BVI Olympian swimmer Alina Phillip won all three of her participating races at the Conference USA Swimming Championships to give her Florida International University Panthers a 31-point lead at the end of Day 2. Competing in the 50-yard freestyle event on Thursday, February 24th, Phillip executed a gold medal performance with a time of 22.33 seconds, the third fastest time in the Panthers program history. Her teammate Kelsey Campbell copped the silver medal with a time of 22.56 seconds, while Rice University student Maddie Howe copped bronze with a time of 22.85 seconds. Take a look at that race. Into the pool, Becca Evans, Kelsey Campbell, and Alina Phillips. All with nearly identical time. Spilko with a great time into the pool as well. Here comes Phillip. Phillip with a gold cap. Campbell just to her left, but it will be Phillip at the wall. 22 33. She wins the gold in the 50 free just ahead of her teammate. Kelsey Campbell second, 22 56. And the bronze goes to Maddie Howe for a second straight year, 22.85 for third. Phillips coming back to the wall. Checking the board. There's the start. Everybody with a clean start in the middle lanes. As we said, nearly identical times at the start. Nobody gained an advantage there. It was all in the pool. 50 yards of the freestyle where Phillip emerged with a victory of 23 hundredths of a second. Phillip collected her second gold medal of the day in the women's 200-yard freestyle relay after her team placed first with a time of 1 minute and 29.75 seconds. Her teammates included Kelsey Campbell, Stephanie Hussey, and Julia Miranda. Second place went to Rice University, while the bronze medal went to Marshall University. Let's take a look at that relay. Layla Webb, just a freshman for Old Dominion, with the opening leg. Another swimmer, Shane McLeod for North Texas, Maddie Howe for Rice. Rayleigh Moy for Marshall and Roberto Searcy for FAU. Those are the first into the pool. They'll have the first 50 yards. Phillip with the lead. Completes her 50 in 22.60. Maddie Howe, 22.94 for Rice, has the Owls in second. Shana McLeod went out in 23.21. Now coming back. Kelsey Campbell is swimming for FIU, looking to maintain that lead. And she does, ahead of Lauren McDougall for Rice. And Katayama for Marshall has the herd in third place at the halfway point. FIU looking to build its lead. Stephanie Hussey out there. She swam earlier in the 500-yard freestyle. Now she's swimming just 50 yards. She maintains the lead for FIU. But Kano Monaro brings Rice much closer. Less than a half second separating the two at the turn. Or Tamir had Marshall in third. And now the final 25 of the 200-yard freestyle relay. It's going to be close between FIU and Rice. Julia Miranda for FIU. Becca Evans for Rice at the wall. FIU holds on. 129-75. Winning by a quarter of a second over Rice. 130-02. Here's a look at the finish. FIU hanging on to win its third straight relay of the championships. Meanwhile, on day one of the event, Phillips steered her team to a new meet record in the women's 200-yard medley relay after they finished first with a time of 1 minute 36.79 seconds, breaking the previous record of 1 minute 36 and 84 seconds.
200 yard medley relay championship final 50 yards for each stroke beginning with the backstroke Tomkova looking to give FIU the early advantage she has it 25 yards in Imogen Mears a sophomore for Rice is in lane 6 just to the left of FIU Diana Cobb and Tara Enneking for North Texas and Old Dominion respectively after the first 50 FIU has the lead it's more than a second already Tomkova coming back to the wall a second ahead of Mears for Rice which is in second place Sarah Girtianfi, the fifth-year senior for FIU, now with the lead, looking to maintain it over Simi Koivu, a junior for Rice. FIU still with the advantage, which has grown to two full seconds. And Marshall, thanks to Paige Banton moving in to second place. And now Katayama, a sophomore for Marshall, swimming the third leg. While Julia Miranda has the third leg for FIU. FIU well out in front. A commanding lead right now. It was two full seconds at the halfway point. And now the lead for FIU has grown to more than three seconds. Maddie Howe puts Rice back into second place. Kadayama from Marshall has the herd in third with 50 yards to go. FIU looking to close it out. This is Phillip, a junior, coming back to the wall. She'll have the first gold medal of the championships for the FIU 200 yard medley relay 136.79 the winning time three and a half seconds better than Rice and Marshall checks in third finishing about a second off of second place so the top three FIU Rice and Marshall to start the week in the 200 yard medley relay Strong swim for FIU. Panthers win by an even larger margin than last year. Phillip coming back to the wall. By this time had a commanding lead, but she added to it as well. Each swimmer for FIU built the lead. Phillips Florida International University Panthers are leading the rankings in their quest for an eighth straight conference USA Swimming Championship. They have a total of 352 points, while Rice University tra trail in second, sorry, with 321 points, and the University of North Texas in third with 202 points. In other news, from a tender age, Virgin Islander Marcella Gordon says she always loved reading, writing, and everything about school. However, English was and still is her favorite subject. Today, Marcella's passion for reading and writing has grown tremendously. She also enjoys playing soccer and was a member of the BVI's national women's team for several years. Marcella, who is also presently a student while juggling work and classes, says she will always find time to enjoy a good book. This motivation for writing has allowed her to publish her first book, My First Alphabet Writing Book, Let's Make Writing Fun Again. She says this project was enhanced by several things, but mostly COVID, her love for school, and her compassion towards others. Marcella, in speaking to 284, said, During COVID, her thoughts went out to the parents who she often saw complaining due to the lack of resources and how frustrating it was at home schooling their children, juggling work and their everyday chores. She also thought about how difficult it might have been for the younger children as their learning skills differ. She wanted to help in some way possible, so she came up with the idea to create my first alphabet writing book, Let's Make Writing Fun Again. Marcella says that through small... Sorry, Marcella says that although small of an achievement and not her last, she would like to thank God, her family, her loved ones, and friends for always applying pressure and encouraging her to be greater today than yesterday. Now, viewers, just so you know, the book is also available on Amazon. Up next, Great Harbor says they've been badly affected by the diversion of cruise passengers to White Bay. Stay tuned. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. 
a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve a suits and a, uh, wait, bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. This season, I'm taking you on an entirely different journey from chefs to dancers, philanthropists, communications specialists, and much more. I'm heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Bojangara, Justin Lake, not forgetting Annie Gara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Get ready to reason, reflect, and redirect. We are the movers and shakers of this generation, and we ain't afraid to show it. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 3, by yours truly, Ron Grant, raising a generation of greatness. You value traditions. To move in. You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome love, life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. Thanks for sticking with us. On February 22, 2022, the Appropriations Subcommittee on Agriculture, Environment, and General Government unanimously passed the SB 898, known as Mia's Law. The bill sponsored by Senator Linda Stewart would improve tenant safety in apartment buildings through required background screenings of employees. In an official statement, Senator Stewart said, I am thrilled with the committee's decision. Everyone deserves to feel safe in their home. And today's unanimous vote brings us a step closer to establishing important protections for all renters. The bill will require landlords to conduct background screenings for apartment employees. The background screening must include a national screening of criminal history records and sexual predator and sexual offender registries. The screening would specifically include criminal offenses involving violence or a disregard for the safety of others and allow a landlord to disqualify individuals with criminal records from employment. The bill has gained traction in both the Senate and the House and I am hopeful we may soon carry this important legislation across the finish line in these final weeks of session. The passage of this bill would represent a major win for the safety of all tenants, says Stewart. The bill also strengthens requirements regarding access to individual units, increasing the required notice to 24 hours, and requiring apartments to establish policies for the issuance and return of all keys, and maintain a key log to ensure the access is only given to authorized individuals at authorized times. The bill moves now to appropriations, its final committee of reference in the Senate. In other news, the business community of Jos van Dijk have been experiencing a number of positives since the lifting of COVID-19 protocols and the resumption of cruise ships in the territory. However, there are still a number of issues that have been plaguing some of the businesses on Great Harbor. This was the sentiment shared by several of the bar and restaurant businesses when 284 News took a recent trip to the sister island. Our Kamal Haynes has that story. It is no secret that our sister island of Yas Van Dyke heavily relies on tourism as its main source of economic activity. Well, since the advent of COVID-19, Yas Van Dyke has been one of the islands most impacted by the stringent COVID-19 travel protocols that once affected the British Virgin Islands. With the lifting of those travel protocols, economic activity has resumed. With a regular sighting of cruise ships into the BVI, as well as sailboats and yachts docked across various shores across the territory. While we toured Great Harbour and stopped at several bars where I spoke to a number of persons. At the popular Fox Seas, I spoke to bartender Ruby, who said that things have been looking good for the establishment since the resumption of tourists into the BVI. So far, it's been very good because before when the COVID was very restricted and all the restrictions, we were really out. We were out because this is a number one tourist destination. And all we do on the Osman Lake is just tourism. We don't have the mainstream industries that supply businesses or jobs for the locals, except for tourism industries. And when we were down, it was really down, bad. And right now we could say we're getting better. You can see out there, we have yachts in the harbor. We have tourists behind of us. We actually have a full moon party going on tonight. And the reason for that is because things are looking better. If it wasn't looking better, we couldn't be here speaking right now, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. 
And you talk about full moon parties. Tell us how these parties have been. I know they may not um, be pre-2019 in terms of the large crowds with no COVID restrictions, but let's speak about how these um, full moon parties have been and the activity um, for, for Foxies. You have people leaving earlier. That's a, that's a normal because, you know, you have the curfews where the bars are supposed to be closed at 12, and then people don't want to be staying in a bundle together because the six feet distancing and whatever. So yeah, we do have a less crowd, but we still have people coming out when they can, doing what they could do, getting a little bit of the festivities and then going home. So it's not like it used to be in the past, but it's getting there. And hopefully, well, actually not hopefully, we know it's not gonna be like it was in the past, but hopefully we continue seeing this kind of festivities, having a little bit of activity just to keep us afloat. Well, our next stop was Alibaba's bar and restaurant, where I spoke to Urentia, who also said that things have been looking up. Well, it has been going on good. Since the, all that restriction is dropped a little, the people coming in, it, there's a lot of people on the island, a lot of boats in the harbor. You know, now everybody on a budget, they are spending so much, but we've been, things been picking up very good. And obviously, from a perspective of what you just mentioned, is promising considering what we would have experienced in 2020 and early 2021, where there was heavy restrictions and persons basically not being able to travel on Yas Van Dyke. We would have heard the concerns from persons on Yas Van Dyke, basically speaking about, you know, there's no activity going on. Mm -hmm. Speak to what this means for the economy of Yas Van Dyke. Well, I would say it's going very good. I mean, you know, we have our good times, our slow times, and our, you know, busy time. It's not like before, but it's been picking up very good, and I wish it would, you know, stay like that. Well, despite the upside of things on Great Harbor, several of the bar owners had similar complaints regarding the issue of cruise ship passengers arriving on the sister island and then being taken directly down to the White Bay area. But they say that this practice has been negatively impacting the Great Harbor community since the businesses in that community misses out on the potential economic activity from most cruise ship passengers. The ship's been coming here for quite a while. Before now, they started to come back again. But from the time it started, what I've been noticing that when they come, they go to one spot. They go to White Bay, everything is taken there for them. They don't even walk around Great Harbor. So nobody in Great Harbor have a chance to make a dollar or two off of them, whether it's a Coke or a water, they buy nothing. And for the future, we would like to see that been fixed because, you know, it's not right that they would come here, just go to White Bay, enjoy the beach, and don't even get a chance to walk around Great Harbor. You know, we feel that if some of them would walk around Great Harbor, at least, if not even Alibaba's, other place would be able to benefit something from them. But it's not happening. Everything is going to one area. And I don't think that's right. Of the I'm at another bar here on Yas Van Dyke. I'm at A and B Bar and Restaurant. I'm here with Mr. Alan Colwood. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Colwood, just speak to me about the activities that you would have seen um, back here on Yas Van Dyke since the resumption of cruise ship vessels here or in the BBI. Well, the activity for the cruise ship, they don't support, support up um, here in, Go in Great Harbor. Most of the time, every time the cruise ship, people come, they go and taxi down to White Bay. So we don't get no support from them at all. So, so in other words, you're saying now, in terms of, yes, there have been resumption of cruise vessels here in the BBI, here on Yost Van Dyke, but the situation presently is that you guys here at Great Harbor are disadvantaged yeah. because the cruise ship vessels go directly down to White Bay? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. so... So, so, uh, mm -hmm. so we have the others, like others bear board come around too, so sometimes this small bit of much support neither because everybody go like... Like they go to the uh, Foxies or go down to St. Castle, Hindus. So like small little local business like like oh my business and like Rose or something, we don't get much much business at all. And what do you yeah, like, 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 like sometimes like they walk out like like I just ask the the tourists like to go come in and support us. There will be some time for we gotta make a little business. And sometimes we have some few captains where we bring people straight to us that we get a little business too. But 
what is not not like not all those like foxes and Hindus and castle. I hope it's not like that. We gotta try to beg people to come to give us a little business sometime. Well, last but not least was the Tipsy Shark Bar and Cafe, where I had the pleasure of speaking with Miss Renee. Well, she too said that there have been a number of ups. However, the issues of cruise ship passengers being directed to White Bay have also impacted her business. Seeing that we are the newest bar opening in town, um, talking to tourists on a daily basis, um, I noticed that one of the things that they always mention that Yost Van Dyke is the last stop that they make due to the testing station here. So they come here, they do, whether they go to the moorings or whatever, and they, they do the whole Virgin Gorda Anagata thing, and then they come here. So that's one, that's one of the little issues that we have here. And being the last stop here, they have to like eat the food on the boat, and you know, so when it comes to spending money and whatever, this is the last stop, so you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the little things that we're finding to be a little tough here for us, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, coming back here, um, since the softening of the restrictions and stuff, I mean, anything, any traffic here is, is good for us, you know what I mean? And we're really grateful for for that mm -hmm. yep and uh, as you said um, unfortunately Yost Van Dyke is usually the last stop for a lot of persons yeah. do you think that something needs to be done to change that you know I mean, we're, in, we're, we're inviting them to be the first stop here you know what I mean I mean we're happy to welcome them to be the first stop here and then take it elsewhere but you know the saying goes you save the best for last as well I mean, I mean yeah I know that but still I mean it's it's kind of a downside for us mm -hmm. yeah and also to uh, another issue that was brought to light in terms of uh, from residents here of some few bar owners as well is the situation that even despite they have uh, the resumption of cruise vessels here on in, in the BVI, it's a situation where they come and they go straight, straight to White to Bay, Bay yes. and basically avoid Great Harbor. Um, can you speak to that as well? Yes, we notice that a lot. Um, when the tender comes, they drop them off into Dog Hole, and then they go straight to White Bay. And that's, that's another issue that we would like to address, that if people can walk the stretch, you know, check out the little businesses and then support them a little bit, even though, you know, you don't have to buy anything. Just come in and you spread the word along. You know what I mean? It is clear that while the resumption of tourist arrivals on Yoss Van Dyke have restored economic activity, the diversion of cruise ship passengers to the White Bay community has been creating a disparity in the distribution of this economic activity. I'm Kamal Haynes reporting for 284 News. That's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Nia Douglas. I'll see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284 Media. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a great evening. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church service. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy, over there. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up power.